the schedule, which is giving regular broadcast network. It's sure given something. <laughs> I'm not fond of it necessarily, um, but to give you guys a rundown, so All American and All American Homecoming are staying put. So it's because it's Monday, it's All American Mondays. Then on Tuesdays, we're going without a superhero show for the first time and I don't know how many years, but I guess they're giving us the Winchester spinoff. So that'll bring in a supernatural crowd. And then we'll have professionals, which is like adjacently Smallville or superhero if you count like because of Tom Welling in the lead. Then on Wednesday, we get Super Wednesday. So we'll have Stargirl who's premiering in a fall time slot, which my God, I don't know about you, but that feels odd to me. Very much so. I don't like that it's, we have to wait that long. It's a summer show. It's always been a summer show. Keep it as a summer show. I know. I mean, I do, it, it's not quite making me scared for it, but I'm not liking the time slot. Um, then there's Kung Fu at nine after Stargirl. And Thursdays, Walker Thursdays. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to bump past Walker. If you've listened to our podcast, you know that's not a show for us. However, we will be there for Cat McNamara and Walker Independence. Cowboy hats, cowboy shoes. Lace up the boots. We're ready. Yes, we are. We're 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 ready. I mean, cautiously. Not, cautiously. I'm excited. Like if you hear like like uh, about this about about the show, it's just you know we lost a lot of our favorite shows to make room for these pilots, and we're excited for the for the years. But we're um, a little nervous about them. And then Fridays, this is when non-scripted television is going to be taking over everything. Um, Penn and Teller will be on, whose line is anyway. Saturdays is a new show. Uh, there'll be Magic with the Stars, which is going to be with Chris Angel. Then you have World's Funniest Animals. And on Sunday, we'll have Family Law and Coroner. So the schedule is not looking like it usually looks um and it's weird no i told you guys earlier when i was looking at it it made me kind of emotional because i was like where are all my buddies because this is like the first year without even though i didn't watch all of those shows this is the first year without all of the standbys on the schedule and i was kind of like this is really new and different i don't know how i feel about it <laughs> Yeah, it definitely, it looks kind of like, as we've mentioned already, like a normal network's kind of schedule. The CW is known for a genre kind of shows and not as many of them are there. I know we can't star girls Arrow versus Adjacent, but this is the first time I think since the CW went Arrow, the Arrowverse route that we don't actually have a mainstream Arrowverse show on. I know they will be back mid season, but you can already see the absence of Batwoman and Legends of Tomorrow on that schedule. Which before we move forward, hashtag save Batwoman, hashtag save Legends of Tomorrow. Um, that is something we're still gonna keep pushing for. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but as far as shows being held for the mid season, which you would have thought Stargirl would have been, like Cody said, he feels the same about it should have been summer, stay in summer. Um, but what else has been moved to the mid season? There's Riverdale season seven, which, you know, final season, which I'm actually like, yay. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm not good with the, the possible 22 episode count, though. I feel like we need to wrap it up. Yeah, we're very much on record of saying that season seven should be the final season and it should be 10 to 13 episodes. <laughs> We've got one of our wishes. Um, but it'll still be bittersweet to see it go. It's weird not seeing it on the fall schedule. I'll say that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it definitely felt, felt like kind of one of those familiar CW properties. And again, looking at the schedule, there aren't an awful lot of familiar properties on that. So yeah, I, I'm glad we're finally, hopefully Riverdale will get to go out as big and bold as it deserves, but I hope it's not over bloated because we don't need, I don't think we ever needed 22 episodes of Riverdale. Season one was nice and condensed, but we got multiple seasons of 22 episodes and we might get one more. But I mean, if it goes out in style, that's what Riverdale does best. I mean, that's the plan. That's why the CEO, Mark Pedowitz, said they wanted to give um, Roberto enough room to complete the story. And he's happy with um, how they want to, I guess we'd, I'm not sure if they know how they're going to finish it, but he's happy with the episode count or where they're trying to get the episode count to. I hope so, that it'll be a grand send off. Um, 
not feeling season six besides the Barchi and even the Barchi could be improved. Um, mm -hmm. Supernatural powers should have been the thing that had us like roaring about this show like every Sunday, just lighting up Twitter with Twitter with excitement. And instead we fell behind <laughs> so badly. <laughs> We gotta put it in timeout. It's okay. It is. It is. But I always feel so bad. I didn't feel bad this season for Riverdale though for putting it in timeout. Um, and then we have Nancy Drew season four coming in the mid season, which was a bit of a surprise. I was excited to be coming a part of the Drew crew in the fall and talking mm -hmm. about it on the podcast in the fall, but that's not the case anymore. We're gonna have to wait till twenty twenty three. I have to say it kind of makes sense based on some alleged tea that we got yesterday oh, yeah. the quick post and delete from the tom swift writers room i don't want to get them in trouble again but there's rumors of a season two pickup for tom swift so that kind of makes sense if we're holding mm -hmm. nancy for 2023 to line up like put the besties together the nancy verse on one night that's true because they are doing that in the fall schedule with the other franchise shows um they are all taking a, a night over so perhaps nancy verse I don't know where to land, but we'll be calling one of the days completely over for a Nancy verse, which is gonna be fun. I've seen Tom Swift, I can't quite talk about it, but I will say it's amazing and y'all are gonna get you live. <laughs> and then the Flash season nine, Michael, I feel bad that the Flash is not gonna be in the fall because that's a really, really, really weird decision to hold it until mid season. However, um, depending on how things go with Candace Patton and depending on how season eight ends, I might need the break to cool off. <laughs> yeah, your opinion might change depending on what happens with her. Um, the Flash was kind of a mid-season show this year because they only, they only did the five-part Armageddon last a special at the end of last year and then the bulk of the season kicked off this year. If that was a preview of what's to come, I mean, now we can get used to it because it will be so weird. I say it was weird seeing the absence of Batwoman at Legends. But I mean, and I know at least The Flash will come back, but it was very weird not seeing one of those staple shows like Arrow or The Flash on uh, a fall schedule because we've just gotten accustomed to like The Flash taking up that like primary role. It was the, the network's biggest show for like, like seven of its eight years. So it feels strange not seeing it there at the beginning. But I think this could be good for The Flash. I hope it need. I, we don't know if it's going to be the final season yet. We just, we don't, apparently neither to the network. But I feel like it could do with a little bit of time to get a solid, coherent ninth season. And there are rumors that it'll be a shorter one. So it makes sense to hold it to mid-season. It's very weird. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It feels weird to say the CW is launching a new era and not using one of its biggest launching pads to do that. But maybe this will work. Maybe the mid-season mid schedule will be stronger than the uh, fall one, we'll say. But it does make sense to hold the Flash, even if it's a little strange. It does kind of hmm. worry me. Oh, why? Veteran show, mid-season. I don't know. Oh, okay. Good like point. Riverdale. But it also makes sense if they're holding Gotham Knights, if they're going to pair those together. Oh, that'd be an interesting pairing. Um... Or, but there is Superman and Lois. I don't know. I don't want those paired together though. <laughs> I just because I feel like the fall off would be pretty harsh. Um, like obviously, if Flash goes first, then people will stick around for Superman and Lois. But if Superman and Lois goes first, they might not stay for the Flash, and that is due to the quality of season eight. I know there are Flash fans who have loved the storytelling um, of season eight. I think a good portion of fans, though, do not. And it is not, it, a lot of it has to do with the way um, Iris West Allen has been written, or in this case, written out. Um, but it also has to do with like the overuse of supporting characters in main character plots. Um, but I'm going to table that because there are so many, like there's so many soapboxes to like to get on. And that is one of them for me. If you've ever watched our Flash reviews, which you should. Uh, Michael and I are usually like, it would have been so much better had they, you know, focused on Barry and Iris. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm good with the mid-season drop. And Superman and Lois season three, we're used to Superman and Lois being in the mid-season, so that's like not a shocker. Um, hopefully uh, they get everything in the can so we don't get as many breaks as we did this season. Yeah, I'm happy about this one. Get it into production like ASAP. Get, get it in the editing room and hit play in, in January. 
I'm in two minds because uh, the last couple or all of the seasons of Superman at Noah so far have been mid-season drops and yet both of them have struggled with hiatus problems. Will the same thing happen with season three? I don't know. And I know this is not related to the schedule but we, or the fall schedule, but we do have, it's just been announced, we have one more hiatus of Superman at Noah's coming up. It will return on May 31st when it's supposed to. It will air the following week, but it will take a one week break before returning to Earth, the two final weekly episodes. That was not originally planned, but here we are, another break. What did we do to deserve this? I mean, Nothing. <laughs> We've been amazing. <laughs> I just, I cannot do any more of these breaks. It is like cutting into the momentum of the storytelling, which is sad because the storytelling is amazing. It is, and I feel like that's the thing that's holding it up because by the time we reach the finale, I don't think we'll have watched more than two episodes in a row in a 10 week period because of how many breaks the show's had to uh, take in between every returns for four episodes off, returns for two episodes off, and now it's going to return for two episodes. And yeah, it's only a one week break, but off the back of all these other breaks, it is hindering its momentum as it heads towards the finale. But okay, well, we're here regardless. <laughs> Uh, waiting <laughs> waiting for the stories to you know come back uh, and also you know waiting for gotham knights which i get that being a mid-season hold i'm fine with as well um i i'm excited for the show it's really hard to get excited about new superhero television given the fact that legends of tomorrow and batwoman were canceled especially canceled in the way that they were canceled but i do want to give gotham knights a chance especially because there's a black girl robin so you know i'm tuning in like it's happening as superhero show fans, what was your guys' first impression of like the first look cast picture and like the art and everything, like the, the logo? I approached it from two angles. On one, I was like, oh, this looks stylish and edgy. And then the other half of me was like, everyone's going to look at this and think, oh, this looks stylish and edgy. Will the <laughs> substance follow? Um, it does have a no flights, no tights look about it. And we've already done that with Gotham. We've already done that with various other shows on the CW uh, or even our various other superhero shows. I don't know if that's what people need to stick in when on the night viewers are dropping so much. I think if you want to start a new era, bring a new DC property into the fray. That's genius. If you want to start a new era, pick the Bat family. That's genius. But let's make a Batman show about everything except Batman and his Bat family may not have the appeal to the wider audience because it's a cw show an awful lot of people are automatically thinking i'm not watching this this is going to be a train wreck what is this even happening and i'm not sure that poster has done en enough to uh, quell those worries they've had but i keep an open mind i like the look of it i'm looking forward to it there is a lot of dc stuff in this even if the poster doesn't relay that and yes it looks stylish and edgy so yes i will be tuning <laughs> in. <laughs> i liked it i don't know it was um it was giving batwoman to me mm -hmm. and so i was like uh, if i take my saltiness away but first hi crystal um but if i take my saltiness away um it looks fine you know we're in an alley clearly it's gritty it's grimy it's dirty um which is like par for the course for gotham um i will say had i not already known who the cast were going to be and read the synopsis and and got into uh, what gotham knights is going to bring i don't know if the poster would have pulled me in um it's yeah, just i don't really know what it's about but i mean it looks good yeah, like it's just a bunch of like young adults slash teens walking through an alleyway with like and very stylish, very edgy. Um, mm -hmm. Budget was there, I guess. I just I don't know. I'm wanting we'll to wait more. for like the official like promotional poster. True. I want to see some or, costumes though. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. I'm not going to judge. I, I, it's, that's everyone's biggest mistake, I feel, with these shows. Everyone judges and then they're like, mm, this is not half bad. There wasn't as much excitement for Superman at Lois back in the day as there should have been because everyone felt it was like two or three years too late. But then look at the show we went and got. I do feel like we're moving towards higher quality programming on the CW. And so I'm, I'm keeping an open mind for Gotham Knights. I hope it delivers because I'm not going to write it off too early. It, 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 it's got potential and I hope even if the poster didn't necessarily highlight that, I hope it will come across in the final product. 